One of the things we started in the course of the year was uh, some beekeeping. Uh, we've got five hives, quarter of a million. And then we make honey from that, bee juice as we call it, and then that's sold in the farm shop we built and that has been transformed from a muddy barn by Lisa into an actual shop. Which works. Which actually works. Yeah, yeah. It was the only thing, I think I'm right in saying, in the course of the year that really genuinely properly works. <laughs> to be honest, what this programme has been is a year of Jeremy Clarkson being shouted at. Lisa shouted at me all the time. Mm -hmm. Caleb shouts at me all the time. The dry stone wall of Gerald shouts at me all the time. Charlie, the land agent, shouts at me really all the time. They do. I get up in the morning, get shouted at, and then go back to bed. But we have ended up with some lovely honey. Well, you know we have another five million bees now. Oh, we've got 25 hives. Five million bees. Is that five million? Yes. We have another five million. So we have five and a half million now. So there we are, we've got five and a half million bees, a lot more honey. And then, you know, the idea is we sell as much as possible from the farm in the farm shop. I have a few questions for you. Mm -hmm. now, well, ladies been... and gentlemen of the newspapers and internet. Correct. Yeah. So, the first question, question number one. You have honey for sale. Have you been beekeeping? If so, how did you get on? Got stung. A lot. Every single time I went there. Every single time without fail. Here's the funny thing about bees, as we discovered. This is a bee suit. It's got zip up down here and you're in one suit and it comes up and around here there's a hat yeah. with a mesh on it. But the bee looks at that and goes, there is a way in. It's like they're in that with their great escape. And one of them found a way in at the bottom of my trousers, went all the way up on the outside of my jeans, then found the gap between the jean trouser and my t-shirt, crawled along there, thought, oh, here's a crack, <laughs> down the crack, and then thought, ready and go. Killed itself, but knew as it died how much pain it brought me. That was funny. <laughs> Question number two. Yeah. How did you have to adapt in the pandemic? It made no difference. As you know, yeah. they said, I mean, I was, when it first started, I thought, oh my God, I'm going to die. And then thought, well, actually, I'm not going to die because we're marooned on a thousand acre slab of Oxfordshire and we're key workers. So we, we were told we had to keep, nobody clapped us. No. <laughs> um, but um, we had to keep going. I couldn't have chosen a better thing to have been doing during a pandemic, if I'm honest, because we were gainfully employed. We worked every day. We were in virtually no danger of catching it because there was nobody around. You see, this is one of the things I've done. Alfa Romeo drivers, 10% discount. Really? Yeah, in the farm shop. Well, because no Alfa Romeo can actually ever make it to the farm shop, but this one has amazingly. What has given you the greatest satisfaction as a farmer? There was every single day I got into bed feeling as though I'd actually achieved something, or more in that day than I had in the previous 30 years, probably. And this is my tractor, Lamborghini, obviously. He doesn't like it. Why is your tractor too big? It isn't too... From the first day I bought this tractor, everyone has said to me, everyone, your tractor's too big, including you. Yes. Everyone, land agent, people in the village, everyone. How can a tractor be too big? It's like a penis. It's impossible for it to be too big. <laughs> it is. It's very powerful. I knew it would need to be powerful. And if it was going to be powerful, it would have to be big. And it is. Look, this tyre is bigger than me. It is too big. It, OK, it doesn't fit through a lot of the gates, I admit. And the first time I turned right onto the road, I ripped half a hedge out. But the upside of its size is it makes your tractor look ridiculous. You have to sit on his tractor. <laughs> sit in my tractor. So, you have clearly learnt about sewing and tractors and farmer things during the, this adventure. What have you learned about yourself? Nothing. <laughs> Let's take the end bit off that. What have you learned about sewing? Nothing. Which is true. Isn't it? No, come on. I'm very good at cultivating. Yeah, that's the only thing you are good at. Uh, I'm drilling. No, you're not. I oh, told no. you, and you did the opposite of what I told you. I have made a couple of mistakes, I'm, I must admit, in the course of the year. And I'm ashamed to say, I still, if you'd like to follow me around the back here, 
I'm still terrified of the back of the tractor because so far as I can see, every single thing here is designed specifically to cut your arm off. Look, everything. If you touch any of these buttons here, things will move and your arm will come off. They, honestly. And what's this? It's growing its own fields. Yeah, that's barley. Can't make some money somewhere. It's a, it's a baffling, baffling thing. Have Richard and James been to the farm to visit? If no, so, no. what do they make no, of it? No, they're, they're banned, both of them. Everyone's welcome except those two. James once threatened to land his light aircraft on one of the fields. Well, I would have shot him down if he'd tried. 